Hello and welcome back to Rage Gaming and welcome to the first days of Baldur's Gate 3 and its full release. With everyone finally jumping in for real, including lots of new players for the first time, I want to talk about some important things to not only know but do pretty much right away. For example, we actually finally have alchemy to play around with in the game. That can be really helpful. You might actually want to respec or get strong in a short amount of time. There's many things you should do sooner rather than later. So I put together this list of 10 things you should do as soon as possible as you begin your journey. We begin with the important and quick one, how to respec. As you can see, I'm speaking with this character here named Withers, who's quite undead and old. Withers can not only respec you for 100 gold, but you can also get hirelings from him, which is quite interesting. But being able to respec for 100 gold is obviously a very important thing, especially in the early days, as it will let you experiment yourself. To find Withers and get him in your camp so you can get a respec, you'll need to come here to the ruins or the overgrown ruins. This is to the east of the roadside cliffs waypoint, if you've got that or behind the ancient door on the beach at the very beginning of the game. Now inside the ruins you'll find a centerpiece main room at the northern point with the statue and some light coming in and as you can see there's skeletons that will attack you when you go here. At the back room there is a button on the side of the wall which will open this secret room and by interacting with the sarcophagus here you will reveal Withers but first you'll have to defend yourself to the skeletons that spawn. By having a positive conversation with Withers he will then show up in your camp at a certain point at which point you can talk to him to respec. A second thing you need to be aware of and do pretty much immediately is alchemy because crafting and alchemy itself is in the game in the full release. With this you can obviously craft potions which is going to be amazing when it comes to specifically potions of healing especially in those early days. Through this we can also make powerful elixirs, useful items like fire bombs, even oils that you can coat your weapon in to get benefits with. At very least you should be using alchemy to make potions of healing to begin with. This will require some materials as you can see and it might seem more complicated than it actually is. Essentially a potion of healing requires rogue morsel salts and any suspension. Now rogue morsels are actually just a mushroom that you can find as you can see in any woods. In fact just to the east of the blighted village is a whole woods that you can explore and find a bunch of rogue morsels in. A neat trick then is to hold alt while you're walking around and it will reveal items and things you can interact with such as the mushrooms you're hunting. Once you've got some of those you can just go to the salts tab and pick rogue's morsel to make some. Second to that is any suspension. As you can can see we can make suspensions whenever we want. I have two options of the Bullywug Trumpet and the Murgrass and the Murgrass is the much easier option here. Murgrass is actually found on the coastline exactly where we start the game. In the waters by the beach you'll find some Murgrass growing. Then with the Murgrass you can turn it into a suspension as you can see not too hard to do and as you make more of these things you'll unlock new options like hey I just got a potion of mind reading. Alternatively you can hover over the thing you want to make and click extract all ingredients so you'll turn what you need into this and then again because we're interacting with the system we're unlocking more options for example now we've got potion of healing greater which is much better which requires some ashes and some more salt to make but to begin with anyway we have our rogues more salt and suspension so now we can craft some potions like so and this is so good because these from a vendor will cost say 100 gold or more whereas this is costing us nothing at all. So a very important thing to know and do as soon as possible. Now speaking on gold, here is a quick tip, especially in the early days, and it is to loot everything. If you open a chest, a barrel, whatever, there's a chance there's going to be junk inside of it. Many times that will be food, which is great for long rests, but it'll be like, say, a rag or something you can sell in general. Once you have a pile of these things, you can take it to a vendor and just sell them all and get your first hefty pile of gold. The thing is, from any point, you can take any item in your inventory, right click it and and choose send to camp and this will send it to the chest that is in your camp. That chest is massive, seemingly endless and we can store everything we want in there to then pull out whenever we want to go vendor. So there's no loss as to carrying it around because you don't have to carry it around weighing you down. It just goes straight to your chest. Do this enough in the early days which really doesn't take much and very quickly you've just got this pile of gold to spend. This is how I reached my first 1000 gold on my first day of playing and at that point you're able to buy equipment that you might want, more potions perhaps or you'll have that 100 gold to respec whenever you need it. Next on the list of things that you want to know and do ASAP has got to be your companions. I 
have my little group here, my party of my selection. But if you don't go and find them and interact with them and unlock them as companions, well, you can't have them. There are six companions you can get in Act 1. So here's the location of all of them. Firstly, on the beach where I'm standing next to this ancient door, on the beach that you crash land on, in fact. Head north and you'll come to the ancient door. Here you'll find Shadowheart and you can speak with her and have her join you. She's very easy to get and an incredible early game companion as a sort of heal bot and buffer. Next, we have Asterion, who's another one we can get right at the beginning of the game. And he's also incredible as a rogue with stealth. It's so valuable. Asterion can be found here on the west side of where you begin the game in between the crashed ship. Simply walking over here, you'll interact with him and very quickly you can convince him to join you. Just northeast of that, we can get our mage, our wizard. We can get Gale, who is quite literally in the waypoint, the fast travel waypoint of the roadside cliffs. So he's going to be a very hard one to miss because you want to touch the sigil to actually unlock the waypoint. Next, we have Lazel, who will be found in a cage here, currently caught by tieflings. This is just north of the roadside cliffs waypoint. Very close, in fact. And you'll need to get her out of here, hopefully without combat, ideally. She'll join you without much convincing, considering the situation. Companion number five will be found here, which is just in front of the Emerald Grove, the Druid faction. This is just north of the roadside cliff waypoint, just beyond where we just got our last companion. Keep heading north and you'll hit this immediately, where you'll encounter a goblin attack on the town. Within this cinematic, Will will actually show up and you'll help him. But you'll need to actually go inside the grove after defeating the goblins, who you'll just find if you follow this north road pretty much to this point by the buildings. He's training a young tiefling. And again, he'll join you very easily. Lastly, for our companions in Act 1, we have Karlak here. You can find this tiefling barbarian right in this exact spot, which is here on the map, just northwest of the actual Emerald Grove, south of this inn building with a bridge, which is just south of the Risen Road waypoint. You'll find her having just just been in combat and she'll happily join you especially if you agree to help her with the quote-unquote paladin situation in the inn building just to the north from here you'll have your at one companion options and you can choose what party to run depending on what you're playing and what your goals are next up let's talk about compound loot as you can see i've now got quite a few blue items and in fact a good chunk of these you can find in this town pretty quick. At the very beginning of the game, you can come to the Blighted Village, northwest of where you begin the game, to the west of Emerald Grove. Be warned, when you enter the Blighted Village, you will be ambushed by a small group of goblins, but once they're dealt with, you can head to the right into the cellar, which is actually a hidden blacksmith sort of forge. Inside here in the chest is the Steel Forge Sword, a one-handed sword that deals five to 10 damage, that has a plus one weapon enchantment on it. To get this early will certainly help you with your damage output, and can be great in a number of characters who can use a sword. In the middle of the town is a moss covered chest though and when you unlock it you're going to find the haste helm the haste helm gives you the smooth start bonus at the start of combat for three turns you gain momentum meaning you can move a little bit further than normal great for melee characters who want to arrive at a target as quick as possible heading just west of that is a windmill and behind the windmill is a trap door if you go down that trap door you'll find a cellar and a chest is in there in that chest you'll find the speedy light feet boots which provides you with speedy sparks, meaning whenever you dash, you get lightning charges, which increase the damage you do with a bit of lightning damage. Further, it even gives you plus one athletics, which is a very nice pair of boots to have in your party in the early game. Finally, if you head north from the windmill to the small hill next to the barn, there'll be a dagger in some cooking meat. And if you can free the dagger from that cooking meat, you'll get yourself a green dagger with again a plus one enchantment. So much good loot in one village and very compound that you should be able to get this very early. And hopefully now you know that they're there, you won't miss them yourself. Next, let's talk about Lump's Warhorn, an item we can use to summon Lump's frenzied band of ogres, a very powerful group of ogres that you can summon at will when you're in a dire situation and you need to win the combat scenario. To get the ogres, you can also come to the Blighted Village just to the southwest right here. In this building will be three ogres that if you are very confident with your persuasion skills, you can convince them to join you. Potentially, you'll agree that they can eat the bodies or you'll pay them or they can keep the gold. But whatever way you get them to join you, you'll then have the warhorn to summon whenever you're in a tough fight. This can be unbelievably helpful in the early days when you're underleveled and facing something a bit deadly. The thing is, you can summon them multiple times, up to three times, as long as you can keep convincing them to come fight for you again. Although, do be careful, you don't push your luck too much. Our next point is also in the blight village this one's a big one though in the shabby wooden doors into the blacksmith's forge in the underground cellar you can loot this wooden chest and it'll have a blueprint a masterwork blueprint for some weapons. This leads to Susur weapons, which are, as you can see, incredible. They're blue weapons with reasonable damage, but most importantly, a passive where they silence targets on hit, meaning those affected cannot cast spells
spells with any verbal component to them, which is incredible when dealing with spellcaster enemies. I used this when facing the hag, and oh my god was it helpful. However, be warned that this will require you to go to the Underdark, which has enemies of level 4 and even 5 in bad scenarios. But fortunately, you can avoid all of them except for the final pack of enemies that is a sort of group of level 4 enemies. But even in that scenario, we're talking about enemies that are also mid-fight with another enemy. So you can turn this situation to your advantage. I would suggest be at least level 3 as a minimum. Anyway, you come to the forge with the blueprint, and you'll need to get to the Underdark to do this. Fortunately, the wall right here is breakable, and as you enter, it will reveal a passage that ultimately leads to the Underdark as one way in. There are other ways to get down there though if you find another option. You'll need to come to the Soothsayer Tree itself, which as you can see in the Underdark is on the very western point. There's a waypoint near the middle called the Underdark Beach and a waypoint at the southeast for the actual outpost. On the map, you can see you'll need to make your way up the hill and along the actual branches to the tree to then grab some of that bark that you're after to craft your own weapon. As I've mentioned though, this is protected by one mad mage and a couple of his hook horror pets, which again are all level four. My advice is to get up high and defeat the mage as soon as possible and then clean things up with the high ground. The bullet, which is down below and very scary, can actually distract the hook horrors for a while and even kill them for you. Once we win the fight, we'll head up the branches of the tree and make it to where we can grab some of that bark. With the bark in hand, we can then go back to the blacksmith cellar and forge our weapon. To do this, you'll need a common weapon as a baseline and of course that tree bark. Put the bark into the forge and you'll turn the flames blue. Then you can put in the normal weapon and turn that into your perfect blue weapon. Based on wiki information, you'll be able to do this with a dagger, a sickle, or a greatsword. This essentially unlocks the ability to craft your own blue quality weapon, and again, a plus one weapon that has a silence property on it, making a major difference in Act 1 as a whole, and for the rest of the game until you change this weapon out. Having a raw silence like this is incredible. And that's why I really want to recommend you do this as soon as possible, but obviously when it is possible for you. But what if you want more blue weapons, incredible weapons that increase your damage, you can get them in pretty easy. As you can see, this quest reward has us choose between three blue quality weapons tied to lightning damage. To get this, you just need to come to Welkian's Rest, which is northwest of the whole map. Just north of the Blighted Village, you can cross the Broken Bridge and head northwest and get the waypoint. And by coming here into the courtyard, you'll find a building that is under attack and on fire. There'll be a pile of people trying to break in, and if you go help them, you can enter the building. Very quickly, they'll tell you that their leader is stuck upstairs and you need to help them. So head up the stairs immediately. You'll need to cross over to the other side of the rooms and break the door that is trapping the leader. But you should be able to do that without too much problem. Exit the building with the group, and just like that, you'll be given given the reward for saving her life. A choice of three incredible weapons, which personally I chose the Jolt Shooter as an incredible ranged weapon that is getting lightning damage on those ranged attacks. Next, let's talk about Scratch the Dog, who is a very cute companion and a dog you can get in your camp. But more than that, he can actually be a useful summon. If you summon him out of combat, he'll actually find items for you, which is pretty neat. To find Scratch the Dog, you'll need to come here to the woods, which is just northeast of the Blighted Village. You'll find a body which Scratch is protecting. By interacting with Scratch and calming him down and making him trust you, you can have him smell you so that he can actually identify your smell and follow you back to your camp. From then on, he'll appear in your camp and you can interact with him and pet him. If you find a way to speak to animals though, such as drinking a potion that can give you animal conversation skill, or maybe have an ally that can just do it, you can make friends with him to a higher degree. With enough time, he'll even have a ball that you can play fetch with. Basically, you improve your relationship with Scratch, and eventually he will become a summon that you can put on your bars and pull out, and hey, have him in the open world. Which is not only neat, but useful because again, he will find items for you. Also, I imagine he's going to be a very popular companion, so why not? Finally, our ironic last thing that I think you need to do straight away is do whatever you want and when you want. I don't think you need to rush this game, especially big picture. It's going to be an incredible long-term experience. My advice is if you can avoid safe scumming everything that ever goes wrong, you'll actually end up with a unique and fun journey, which in turn means you can replay the game and make different characters on a new class and character and have a different experience. After all, when it comes to Act 1, you're probably going to want to be at least level 5 before you move on as a concept, so take your time and enjoy it. I hope these tips can help you have a smoother initial experience, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with doing it in totally different orders and different ways. For now though, I do hope the video was useful and you learned something. And if you have any other bonus tips to help people in their initial days of playing, you can drop them in the comments. For now, I've been Hollow, you've been you, thanks for watching, we'll see you next time. 
Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice to look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage is uh goodbye.